Hi everyone, this is Anna Sophia Alcaraz from the Center for Global Education. Um, and we wanted to give a presentation on the global perspective from home. Um, because we're all kind of stuck inside right now and, and staying safe, we want to make sure that you're still engaging in the global perspective, even if we can't necessarily be traveling abroad right this second. Um, and even once we are back out in the world, uh, this will be a great resource for you to explore on the days that you cannot go out. So, um, first, what is the global perspective? Uh, the main thing is it is one of our core pillars here at Marymount University, and it connects Marymount, the Marymount community to the world. Um, you develop this through a few different uh, competencies that we've talked about. Uh, that we discuss at the Center for Global Education. So global self-awareness, perspective taking, uh, focusing on cultural diversity, and then social responsibility and commitment to service. Now, some of these are done through classes. Some of these we really recommend for um, semesters abroad or certain programs or events on campus. So um, check out our website. Once those pages are up, you can explore them and see how you can develop each of these competencies. Um, the global perspective is helpful because it can help you uh, view your career in a different light. You know, maybe teaching is done one way here in the U.S., but when you do uh, teaching abroad, it opens up a different form of teaching that, that we don't really do in the U.S. And so it allows you to be a better, better person, better in your field, no matter, no matter what your field is. Um, the global perspective also helps you develop empathy and just again develop a more well rounded approach to life. And you can do this in a lot of different ways. So, the main one that we always focus on at the Center for Global Education is study abroad. So, semesters abroad, summer semesters, you can do global classrooms, which we've talked about and many of you have done. Um, where you go abroad for a week with your class and get to put what you've been learning in the classroom into practice somewhere else. But you can also do this if you aren't going abroad through taking courses that have an international focus. So international politics or looking at history of different regions of the world or reading authors that are not from the US that are from different parts of the world. You can also develop these by taking a different language that'll help you connect to others and to connect to those in your community who do speak that language. And finally, a really big one as well that we that we do is hold events around campus. And this could be speakers, these could be panels, these can be discussions. Um, so going to events where you're interacting with people of different backgrounds is also a great way to develop them. But as I said, right now, uh, we're at home and what can I do if I'm stuck at home? So that's a good question. There's still ways that you can do this. So um, we want to make sure that we're focusing on just some fun things that you can do. So if you are a lover of art, you can actually take tours of museum. So museums around the world are actually uploading materials and pieces and doing virtual tours. So even though you cannot go abroad right now to that museum, you can actually visit those. So um, these are just a few of the ones that have virtual tours at the moment. So the British Museum in London is a museum focused on ancient artifacts and uh, the original Rosetta Stone is there, pieces of the Parthenon. You can learn about the different pieces from all around the world in this museum set up very fun, you know, divided by region. So definitely you can explore that. The Musée d'Orsay in um, Paris uh, is also available. You can do a, a virtual tour there. Same with the Louvre um, in Paris. There's the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art for those who really like modern art in Seoul that you can kind of explore. Um, don't quote me on the pronunciation, but the Rijks Museum in Amsterdam, which has a lot of amazing artwork, uh, as well as the Museum of Art in Sao Paulo in Brazil. And then for those of you who studied abroad in Florence, Italy, uh, the Uffizi Gallery actually has a virtual tour. So because we are uploading this to YouTube, not only will we link all these museums 
in the description below, but we're going to actually try to link them on the screen that you see right now. So click around if for some reason that um, clicking doesn't work, the links will be down below. And we'll try to do this with all the different things that we're going to share. Um, but there are a lot of different museums with virtual tours. If you're interested in that, you can always search virtual tours museum and see what else is out there because this was just a small list that we pulled. There were a lot of other museums in Korea that were up and in London and just all over the world. Different museums are uploading their work so people can still interact with them. Really big one that we love to emphasize is learning a new language. And it's never too late to learn. And right now, especially that you're here at home, um, we know that you're busy with classes, with finals, with theses. Um, we, we know that sometimes it isn't always to, easy to take time, but learning a new language is a great skill for the workforce and just for personal development too. So we have two different applications that we recommend. First one is, um, Duolingo. So this is really good for beginners. It is a phone app, although it also does have a website and it does have different 94 different language learning courses in 23 languages. So some languages like Spanish might have multiple courses under there. That's why there's 94 language learning courses, even though it's in 23 um, different languages. So I know that Greek is on there, Japanese, Spanish, German, um, so you can definitely play around there and you kind of set your own schedule. You can play around there for 10 minutes a day um, and it's very easy to use. The one that the Center for Global Education has, which we really recommend, is Pronunciator. Um, and Pronunciator has 80 different languages that you can learn from. Um, that you can learn about. So they've got virtual coaches, they've got pronunciation checks, customized classes, so you can choose to do something a little bit more structured or you can choose to do something at your very own pace. So they also have easy classes advanced, so no matter what level you are, you can be using Pronunciator. Um, as I said, this is actually a free system for our students um, and for you know, for anyone here at the Marymount community. So an amazing system, you can access it by reaching our LibGuide and I will link that so you can actually click on it or again, it will be in the description. So take advantage of these. Um, right now we're all looking for ways to be entertained. So actually finding new media, books, movies, shows, music, all of that will help you connect to others. Um, so some ways to explore these options is are look up top music hits in each country. So really try to expand your horizons. If, you know, I love pop music, um, I will try to look at pop music that's available all over the world and kind of filter out or, or skip over those that are from the US and focus instead on the ones that are that I haven't heard of or maybe that that I know are from a different country. Um, you can also look up song song camp competitions from around the world and listen to their winners. Eurovision has some excellent music. Um, so you can you know get to know a new artist that way. I'd also recommend just looking up your favorite genre with a different country. So if you like punk music, look up punk and Brazilian or punk and Indian and like make sure that you're, you're adding music. So that way you can actually explore some new genres, see what classifies as your favorite genre in a different country. And another big one is actually look up new radio stations. So I know with Apple Music, if you do have that, you can look up music stations from around the world. So I, my personal one that I would listen to was NJ in Belgium, NRJ. And that had a nice blend of music from all over Europe. Um, but you, if you studied abroad, maybe you can find your favorite radio station from when you were abroad that way or online. Uh, and this is just another way to explore. If you are interested in movies, less music, um, and are interested in movies or shows, uh, we know that we put up and listen to some of your recommendations 
that you had for um, on a post about TV shows, but you can keep exploring these on Netflix and, and other, other systems. But there are, if you're into dramas, there's K-dramas and Spanish dramas and telenovelas, um, Swedish crime shows and different Indian films, not just Hollywood. So what I'd recommend is if you're going on to Netflix, actually look up specific countries. Because if you put in international show or international movie or international documentary, the options that are going to show up are more limited and typically still have a U.S. focus. Um, it's easier if you start writing like Norwegian film or Swedish film or French film, and that will start bringing up more options. Um, things that usually wouldn't come up on the search. So play around, see what options, see what you know shows and, and films are out there that are accessible to you. Um, and do this with any with any system that you're using, not just Netflix. Hulu sometimes has different things. Um, you know, Amazon Prime, see what's out there. Documentaries, if you're someone who is interested more in uh, the real life, the nonfiction, look into documentaries about what you're passionate about. There's documentaries about nature and locations all over the world. If you're interested in sports, there are documentaries on different football teams and different sports teams just all over the world. History as well, or music documentaries. And again, like with the international movies and TV shows, play around with a genre. You know, you can write Oscar winning, but you can also look up Spanish language documentaries. Um, one that I would really recommend on YouTube is Cloth Map. Um, he is someone who goes around and was looking at the gaming situation in Ukraine and Bosnia and Cuba. And so having a video game focus, but looking at it through different countries' eyes and seeing what was being done there. Um, and if you're into books, first of all, you can always try to um, explore what are classics, what are books that are read in that country that are seen as, you know, fundamental but um, just a few that I pulled are like Pedro Paramo, The Little Prince, The Alchemist. Um, so look up different books, see what's out there from international authors. Um, and again, look up your favorite genres. And you can do this not only by looking up international books, but also look up just diverse books, diverse authors. You can also do this by exploring our LibGuide. Um, as I mentioned, our LibGuide is linked on our Center for Global Education page. I am going to link it here. Um, a lot of people don't realize we have this resource and it's super helpful. Um, it's part of our library and we've got, it's got a few different focuses. So we've got the country profiles um, and under country profiles, you can find profiles listed under the World Bank in their information. You can find the CIA World Factbook. Um, we've got culture crossing, which tells you a little bit about each country's culture and how you're expected to act, and the BBC Factbook. So if you're just looking for general information, that's a really great um, find. If you're looking for how to add the global perspective to whatever research you're doing or to your class, we have a section called Find Articles, and this has a lot of different articles on there. So A to Z, the world, we've got... Um, a system for women and feminist studies from around the world. There are some that have a Latin America, Spain, and Portugal focus, and then one that really focuses on culture. So again, even adding research with a global perspective is adding the global perspective to your life from your couch. Um, we have a section called Find Books. So we've got ebook selections that you can look up culture, sociology, world religions, um, sociology of certain regions of the world. So we'll have ebooks and then there are physical books as well um, that you can see what's available, what, what we, you know, listed under there. So again, even for reading, you can see what we've got. We do have a world news section. I know that uh, sometimes we can be overwhelmed with the news, but there is a section for today's front pages 
um, so you can see what's being reported on around the world. Newspaper Source Plus, which has audio and TV and like all different media formats of the news. So you can use that again, not only for your research, but just for your own curiosity. Um, there's also this thing called Factiva and Factiva might be interesting to our business students. It focuses on business and markets. Um, so again, the news, but through the focus of your major or through your section of interest, but with a global perspective. International data, we've got the World Health Organization on there that you can look at their data. Um, the OECD, which is focuses on economic and development um, cooperation around the world, and then different UN data that you can pull again for your, your research. And then we do have organizations and geography. So organizations have lists of organizations that you can intern with that have a global perspective or organizations with volunteers. And then geography has maps and a lot more that again, just to help you explore the world. Um, and as I mentioned before, Pronunciator, which is our language learning, will be under the LibGuide. So if you're looking just to play around and explore, this is a really great way to do so. So what about if you're someone who likes going out and exploring and seeing the world in person? So we pulled a few different street views and tours that we think you might like. So. First of all, for those who really love the outdoors, there are a couple other websites that we'd recommend. First, there's Google Trek, and Google Trek actually compiles treks um, that they hire people to do. So you can, in a way, take the trek that that person did. Um, sometimes it's just by very immersive camera work, um, like almost like Google Street View, but you know, with the trek. Um, Sometimes it is more like video. Airpano is another one. Airpano is a video and it's a 360 view video um, that you can explore. And they've got a lot for like uh, Russia on there, a few around California even. <clears throat> well, California will come up in, in another one, but Airpano has amazing videos from all over the world that you can 360 of Angel Falls in Venezuela, which is the tallest waterfall in the in the world. So if you are interested in exploring the world in that sense from your couch, definitely use those two websites. <clears throat> so some of our favorites, you can actually explore, explore Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Um, that would be through Google Trek and you can play around there, walk around the area, see what it's like. There are two different ones, which again, we're going to link these and we will put them in the captions as well. Um, two different ones for Machu Picchu, um, one through Google Treks and one through a, a different site. And you can learn a little bit more, see what it's like to walk around this amazing uh, historic place. Uh, you can go explore Petra in Jordan, uh, another amazing location, and then there's also a great video on Bhutan, the Kingdom of Bhutan, um, and this one is a 360 video, as I said, um, and it shows you a few different sites from around this area. Uh, there's also one on Chichen Itza. This one, I believe, was an aerial view, but again, being able to see the different locations um, in this, um, it's not just a pyramid, it's a whole kind of city. Um, and you can explore that. If uh, one of our students went to China a few years ago, and so the Guilin Mountains, you can actually see these amazing natural, this amazing location in China through um, videos with, with this link. If you're someone who enjoys more cities, um, then these might be for you. So there's a link towards exploring Venice. So you can actually walk around the streets, check out the canals. So the Venice one is really nice. Um, on the right hand side is a video from Kyoto. So these videos are in 4K. The person who does them is a, has a whole channel of walking tours and they will just walk around the city taken the sites. This one is not a 360 view, I will let you know, 
but it gives you a good sense of what it's like to explore a location. And they've got some of Japan, they've got some of the Philippines, and this is where I mentioned California. This is the person who puts up um, videos of different parts of California. So you can even be exploring and, and Boston tours and things like that. So you can even be exploring different parts of the US. Um, with the California one, I know that they made one on like Lunar New Year and exploring Little Tokyo. So you can even be exploring the diversity within the US through these walking tours. Um, we thought this Kyoto video was really nice and it's just really great to hear the sounds of the street again. You can listen to it with headphones and it's a really immersive experience. It does make you feel like you're back outside. Um, there's one on the Philippines as well. Uh, there's quite a few, but we like the Intramuros historic walled city one. And then also for those who studied abroad in Korea or were really curious about that, there are quite a few on, on Seoul as well. The other thing is just do something new. Get out of your comfort zone. Right now, um, things can be a bit monotonous, so finding different ways to break that routine or add a little spark to it will be helpful. So uh, one of the things that you can do is look up the GeoGuessr game. So I will let you know that you will need to create an account, but it is free. And once a day you can play a game. Um, the GeoGuessr game is one that I've really enjoyed over the years, but it basically will drop you off somewhere in the middle of a Google Street View, and you can walk around in any direction and take any clues that you can from there. You can look at signs, you can look at the language, look at the weather of the location, um, what side of the street they're driving on, street signs. And what you will do is once you think you're ready, you place a pin, it'll have a little pin on the right hand side map. Um, you'll place a pin where you think you are and you get points based on how many miles from the correct location you were in. So it's five rounds that you'll do five different locations. Um, and as I said, you can do this once a day. Uh, my, my spouse and I get very competitive about this one. So you might want to play this with some friends. Um, and it just gives you a good sense again of noticing your surroundings and being aware of cultural differences and and it gives you a good view of, of a different location. There's the website Games for the Brain where you can uh, learn about flags and so have a guessing game of what flag is from what country. They have geography games where it's, you know, actually labeling certain countries. Um, there's also another website called World Geography Games that uh, you may enjoy. They're just ways to be learning in a, a creative way. And then also look up recipes. Cook something from a country you want to visit. Um, if you, I know right now that some things are harder to find in supermarkets. If you are going to a market, maybe you want to visit one of the local ones, um, not one of the big chain ones, but you can find different fruits or ingredients there sometimes. Um, stay safe wear a mask, do whatever you need to to stay safe. But um, if you are going to grab groceries, um, it might be a good time to just play around in the kitchen and try baking something, cooking something from a different country. And another thing is just stay connected to Marymount. Um, we're always promoting the global perspective in classes and other ways. So um, don't lose sight of that reach out to your Saints community. First of all, watch webinars. We are putting these out, we're working on them. Um, read the bark, see what's going on, um, quote unquote, on campus here at the Marymount community. <clears throat> I know that International Club is, is ha holding Zoom ha hangouts. So follow them on Engage, they'll be sending out uh, reminders about their events but also follow other international focus club, International Affairs Society, Latino Student Society, Black Student Association, like look at all the, the different um, clubs and organizations that are going on around campus and see what they're doing to stay engaged with them. Uh, you can set up a meeting with the Center for Global Education online actually. So even if you're not thinking about studying abroad right now, you can start planning ahead. Um, you can also read musings of the traveling saints. We have a little screenshot on the computer there. Um, 
that is our study abroad blog. And so you can read that, read about the different experiences that our students have had. You can actually sort it by country, by person, or by program. Um, so a few different options. And you can, again, just play around, read, even if someone isn't going to the same location as you are, um, they have, or that you would like to, they often have insights. Um, and find ways to bring the global perspective into your class. Bring international research into your papers. Use the LibGuides. Find ways to tie the subject back to the international. Um, never stop being curious, even though you're at home. So those are just a few different ways to engage in the global perspective from home. We hope when we see you again, you will have stories to tell us about things you learned um, and that we'll be able to help you go abroad, but never stop learning. We are here for you. And please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you so much. And small shout out again to SlidesGo for letting us use this template. So wishing you all the best.